Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Hope you're having a good day. Uh, so, uh, anyway, the Lord allowed you to wake up today, so do something for Him, and, and yes, tomorrow is the Lord's day, so assemble with the saints, and, and uh, you can't go wrong. All right, today's lesson is about spiritual landmarks. See, landmarks were important in Old Testament days, and they are also important in our day. See, in the ancient lands of Canaan were to be divided by the children of Israel, and there were guidelines to see that each family kept possession of their family land. And careful genealogies were kept, and rigid laws were enforced to see that the land was kept in the families, and that, if necessary, could be reclaimed in the years of Jubilee. And markers for this land were set up, usually made of stone because of stability, and they would serve as landmarks to let the families know where to allow their flocks to graze and where to plant their crops and where to build their dwellings and where to build their fences. You know, today they use surveyors to keep track of land purchases, and every home comes with a surveyor's affidavit of legal status along with every deed and property transaction. So landmarks can be rivers, hills, even trees. And so what is the danger of moving the landmarks? Well, landmarks give us boundaries. So we have, in, we have instructions from the scriptures not to move the landmarks. In Deuteronomy 19 and verse 14, it says, you shall not remove your neighbor's landmark, which the men of old have set, and your inheritance, which you will inherit in the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. <coughs> and then in chapter 27 of Deuteronomy, verse 17, said, Cursed is the one who moves his, labor, his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. And we jump to Proverbs 22, 28, says, Do not remove the ancient landmark which your fathers have set. And in chapter 23 and verse 10, do not remove the ancient landmark, nor enter the field of the fatherless. All right, so some people did move the landmarks. And so there's a reason for not moving the landmarks, and it, it keeps things stable, secure, and correct. It keeps confusion away, and it helps people identify what is mine and what is yours. Most of us live in a house, and in our neighborhoods, we have a fence set up. And that is our property, but we don't appreciate if somebody else comes onto our property without permission. And so we, we can understand that. <clears throat> so some did remove or move these landmarks, and the Bible tells us they were wrong. <clears throat> see, in Job 24, 2, some remove landmarks. They seize flocks violently and feed on them. Hosea 5 and verse 10 the princes of Judah are like those who remove a landmark. I will pour out my wrath on them like water. So moving a landmark is punishable, and God did not like it. But let's focus on the real important thing is spiritual landmarks. See, we need to learn that there are spiritual landmarks that God has given us. And when we decide to move these landmarks or even move, remove them, there can only be confusion. See, in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. And in 2 Thessalonians 2, and verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. So this gives a lot of people problems when they try and move spiritual landmarks. See, most people grow up thinking that parents and the establishment is a narrow-minded and out of touch with reality. And they fail to grasp what life is all about. I mean, the zeal of youth wants to make a difference, and they think that it can only happen with change. And by trying new ideas, and, and anything new sometimes, just for the sake of change. But they, they, they find out that, that does, it doesn't work that way. See, in Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 10 Ask the question, is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new? It has already been in ancient times before us. See, the warning from God is to continue in the ways that are established and true. 
in Jeremiah 6 and verse 16, thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But we know the people said we will not walk in it. Philippians 3.17, Paul writes, Brethren, join in following my example, and note those who so walk as you have for us, or have us for a pattern. And 1 Timothy 1.16 says, However, for this reason I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. And then in verse 13 of 2 Timothy 1 and verse 13, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. And Titus 2, 7, he says, In all things showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing integrity, reverence, and incorruptibility. So the ancient ways, the patterns and examples that were given in the Bible so what have they got to do with us today? I mean, does this apply to the church today? And yes, it does. See, there are those who want to change the landmarks. And we can call these landmarks the rules, the laws, or the patterns. They want to change the landmarks that God set up. And they attack the old ways as old, outdated, obsolete, unnecessary, and and really nothing, nothing to be paying, paid attention to. These people want to be progressive, and that is all right if they want to get closer to God, progress closer to God, but when they progress away from God, it brings forth sin and folly. You know, James 3.16 says, For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. And that, that's a good description of these who are progressive against God. They don't believe in following the Bible. They just want to do their own thing, and they just want to make, make people feel like they're okay. doesn't matter how they live their life. Well, that's not the way, it's, way it was set up. See, many people feel it's all right to go beyond the Scriptures. And they say, so, well, if your heart's in the right place, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, that's not what the scripture says. So what does progress do? Well, when you think about it, denominationalism is one result. I mean, division is another result because people want to be progressive at any cost. And some people aren't prepared to be as progressive. So what's going to happen is uh, division is going to take place. You know, modernism has affected some so-called liberal brethren uh, to an extreme degree. I mean, they are now fighting this and calling for a return to the Bible because they have progressed or digressed so far from God. We see this in, in a lot of the, the liberal ranks where all of a sudden people wake up. Wait a minute. This isn't anything like we grew up with. This isn't anything like the Bible talk. So let's get back to the Bible. You know, they were saying that 150 years ago. Let's get back to the Bible and, and the restoration movement. Uh, and now all of a sudden, in the past 60 year, 50, 60 years, even those who divert, diverged into a liberal pathway, they're saying, hey, we need to get back to the Bible. And so they're, they're fighting this. And so... Because they have digressed from God. They left the Bible. You know, a lot of these groups, I mean, they don't even use the Bible anymore. A lot of these progressive and very liberal groups, they don't use the Bible anymore. And they really make fun of and chastise those who do bring up the Bible. And in other words, they assign evil motives to these people who would speak the truth. So... And it happens even in the conservative ranks. We see these problems. We look at other religions growing, and we see members leaving the church and going to some human-made religion. I mean, now, what's the sense in that? I mean, some try to follow the pattern of the denominations, and they eventually start teaching what the denominations teach. And, of course, it's not the Word of God which they're teaching. And that's not what the Bible teaches. So, folks, we are in a struggle to maintain the ancient landmarks. 
and the landmarks we must keep are truth, the pattern of sound doctrine, and God's word. And when people try and depart from God's word, there's just confusion, and then, of course, there's sin that takes place. So we keep the ancient landmarks by supporting and respecting them. Support the teaching and the sponsoring of the truth and knowing enough about the truth to recognize when the landmarks are different or removed. So think about those things. I mean, people try and move the landmarks all the time to suit their own fancy, to suit their own desires, and technically to suit their own selfishness. And, and so we should not be doing that. We should find people who are willing to stick with the truth and preach nothing but the truth. And when we find them, we should support them and join up with them and do the same thing. So that's the only way we're going to make it to heaven is the truth is the only thing that will help people get to heaven and practicing the truth will do that. People who don't obey the Christ according to the truth given are not going to see heaven. You know, John 3, 36 tells us that. So think about these things. That's our lesson for today. And... Um, Remember not to move the landmarks that God has established. And so, uh, and you'll do well. So have a good day, and Lord willing, we'll see you again another day. Bye-bye.